my name is Trinity, and if you are here, you must be here to talk about books because that's why I'm here, to talk about some books. And in today's video, we are going to be talking about books that Twitter loves, but BookTube doesn't talk about. <laughs> so if you guys don't know, I am a book blogger. I have been a book blogger for seven years. I have a great group of people that I have met and adore on Twitter. We have a very large community on Twitter and it's a lot of fantasy vloggers. And when I joined BookTube, one of the things that I wanted to do was to talk about some of the books that BookTube doesn't talk about. And I have found that on Twitter there, I don't know if it's different demographic or if it is just a different type of reader that goes to Twitter as opposed to YouTube. But I did want to talk about some of those books that I keep hearing about that no booktubers are talking about. And recently I asked on Twitter, what are some book recommendations that you would recommend outside of The Wheel of Time, Lord of the Rings, Game of Thrones, Stormlight Archive, you know, Malazan, the big ones that everybody is talking about on BookTube. And I got a lot of answers, but I also got a lot of common threads. There are quite a few that came up multiple times, and these were all books that I've heard of and haven't yet got a hold of. A lot of them are on my TBR, and I just wanted to share them with you guys so that you guys are aware of them, especially if you don't follow the book community on Twitter. So I am going to be looking off to the side here a little bit so that I can read you some synapses from Goodreads. One of the books that is the most recommended books to me, recommended series, trilogies to me, is The Last War by Mike Shackle. And the first book is We Are the Dead. I will put an image up for all of these books because like I said, most of them are on my TBR that I have not yet acquired or I do have some of them in ebook. So again, I don't have the physical copy. So for We Are the Dead, the war is over, the enemy won. Now it's time to fight back. Sound familiar? For generations, the people of Dia, a land where magic has long since faded from the world, clinging on in only a few rare individuals, have been protected from the northern eagle hordes by their warrior caste, but their enemy has not been idle. They have rediscovered magic and use it to launch an overwhelming surprise attack. An invasion has begun. And in moments, the war is over. Resistance is quashed. Kings and city leaders are barricaded in their homes, awaiting banishment and execution. The warriors are massacred, and a helpless people submit to the brutality of Egril rule. Gia's heroes have failed it. They are all gone, and yet there is still hope. Soon the fate of the kingdom will fall into the hands of a schoolboy terrorist, a crippled Shulka warrior and his wheelchair-bound son, a single mother desperate enough to do anything she can to protect her baby, and Teenstra, a disgraced daughter of the Shulka's greatest leader, who now lies dead by Egril's hands. This is grimdark, if you haven't figured out. <laughs> but a lot of the people who read Joe Abercrombie have like pushed this book on Twitter so hard, this trilogy on Twitter. And I feel like I'm going to really, really love it. If you guys want a rating for this book, it comes in at a 4.1 on Goodreads, which is very high. And like I said, all of my friends on Twitter are talking about it. They love it. Many of them have received arcs for these in the past, but I have not heard anything bad about this series. So 
I would highly recommend it, especially if you're a fan of Joe Abercrombie. Next would be a fantasy debut by Matthew Ward, The Legacy of Ash. And again, this is a book I keep hearing about all over the place on Twitter. And from what I've heard, a fantastic. We have another above four star rating on Goodreads. And the synopsis says, a shadow has fallen over the Tresian Republic. Ruling families, once protectors of justice and democracy, now plot against one another with sharp words and sharper knives. Blinded by ambition, they remain heedless of the threat posed by the invading armies of the Hadari Empire. Yet, as Tresia falls, heroes rise. Victor Akadra is the Republic's champion, a warrior without equal. He hides a secret that would see him buried as a heretic. Josiri Trellin is Victor's sworn enemy, a political prisoner. He dreams of reigniting his mother's failed rebellion. And yet, Kayleen Trellin, Josiri's sister, seeks only to break free of their tarnished legacy to escape the expectation and prejudice that haunts the family name. Now, this is a dark political fantasy. And if you love political fantasy, I've heard that you are really going to love this one. Maybe, maybe the difference in Twitter and booktube is dark. I'm not sure, but I've heard nothing but good things about this. And again, it was one that has been recommended to me over and over. And I am very excited to get my hands on this one. I plan to order it very soon, so keep on the lookout for that. Now, next on my list would be the Cradle series by Will White. Again, on Goodreads, above four star rating. So the first book in this series is Unsold. And the synopsis is sacred artists follow thousand paths to power using their souls to control the forces of the natural world. Lyndon is unsold, forbidden to learn the sacred arts of his clan. When faced with a looming fate he can't ignore, he must defy his family rules and forge his own path. That's the whole synopsis for this book. Now, anybody I have talked to who has picked up this series has loved it. And tip for you Audible users, it is free to listen right now. So pick it up. <laughs> but I've heard nothing but great things about this. Anybody who's talked about the Cradle series has said, oh yeah, it's great. It is amazing. And so I know a couple people who have this on their favorites list, but I also have heard quite a few people say, even though it's not my favorite, I really loved it. So again, <laughs> one that Twitter loves that BookTube doesn't talk about. <laughs> Okay, this next series was recommended multiple, multiple times. Like this, I've asked this question in the past and this series always comes up and I never even heard of it. But it is The Devil Recycle by Katherine Kerr. And the first book is Daggerspell. Even as a young girl, Jill was a favorite of the magical, mysterious wild folk who appeared to her from their invisible realm. Little did she know, her extraordinary friends represented but a glimpse of a forgotten past and a fateful future. 400 years and many lifetimes ago, one selfish young lord caused the death of two innocent lovers. Then and there, he vowed never to rest until he righted that wrong and laid the foundation for the lives of Jill and, and all those whom she would hold dear. Her father, the mercenary soldier, Colin, the exiled berserker, Rodri Mailwad, and the ancient and powerful herbman, Nevin, all bound in a struggle against darkness and a quest to fulfill the destinies determined centuries ago. So, it sounds like it's going to be whimsical and really great. 
<laughs> Whimsical isn't always my thing, but this was recommended to me so many times that I really want to get my hands on this and give it a go. And I hope you guys will join me. <laughs> okay, the next one I want to talk about is The Poison Wars by Sam Hawk. Now, this, this series, this novel, is actually award-winning. The Dittmar Awards for Best Novel and Best New Talent. Uh, Norma K. Hemming Award, the Aurelius Award for Best Fantasy. So this one doesn't have quite as high of a rating as the other ones, but it has been allotted. And I think this sounds so good. I was seven years old the first time my uncle poisoned me. Outwardly, Joven is the lifelong friend of the Chancellor's charming, irresponsible heir. Quiet, forgettable, in secret he's a master of poisons and chemicals, trained to protect the Chancellor's family from treachery. When the Chancellor succumbs to an unknown poison and an army lays siege to the city, Joven and his sister Kalina must protect the heir and save their city-state. But treachery lurks in every corner and the ancient spirits of the lands are rising and angry. So we all know how I feel about some rogue characters. But again, this is one that is always recommended to me, and I think it sounds really, really good. The first book, of course, is City of Lies. And with it being having so many awards and things like that, I really, really think I want to get into it. I also have a little bit of a problem with uh, award winning novels. <laughs> we'll see how that goes. But even though this is lower rated than the other books that I've talked about, 3.84 is what the rating is on Goodreads. Next, I want to talk about The Reborn Empire, Devin Madsen. We Ride the Storm. This book was plastered all over Twitter when it first came out. And I heard nothing but good things about it. I do own this one. <laughs> in the midst of a burgeoning war, a warrior, an assassin, and a princess chase their own ambitions no matter the cost in Devin Madsen's visceral, emotionally charged debut. War built the Kissian Empire and war will tear it down. <laughs> okay, so again, this is one that I have heard nothing but good things about and it's almost a four star, almost on Goodreads, 3.99. I will let you guys know what I think about this novel because I plan to read it very soon, but this is one that the blogosphere just blew up. And again, I think that Twitter leans more to the dark side <laughs> because this is another dark novel and i just i can't wait to read it and i again hope you guys will join me in reading this book all right let's talk about the trilogy that haunts my every step <laughs> on twitter not in real life but on twitter i cannot talk about urban fantasy with someone asking me if i've read this trilogy i cannot ask the question what is a fantasy <laughs> series that you guys recommend that is not the big ones. Never fails. <laughs> Dirk Ashton's Paternus Trilogy. Now, if you see the covers of these books, I'm going to tell you, you are not going to get the full scope of these books because they are urban fantasy. And you're just going to see guys fighting monsters on the covers. <laughs> and I love this little blurb because I don't know how you put these four things together, but this is what it says. Described as American Gods meets the Avengers and Supernatural meets Lord of the Rings, Paternus combines myths from around the world in a modern story of action and intrigue that is urban fantasy on the surface, but so much more at its core. Even myths have legends, and not all legends are myth. <sighs> <laughs> what 
When a local hospital is attacked by strange and frightening men, Fiona Patterson and Zeke Prisco save a catatonic old man named Peter and find themselves running for their lives with creatures beyond imagination hounding their every step. With nowhere else to turn, they seek out Fee's enigmatic uncle Edgar. But the more their questions are answered, the more they discover that nothing is what it seems. Not Peter, not Edgar, perhaps not even themselves. The gods, monsters, heroes, and villains of lore. They're real, and now they've come out of hiding to hunt their own. In order to survive, Fee and Zeke must join up with powerful allies against the ancient evil that has been known by many names and feared by all. The final battle of the world's oldest war has begun. I am not gonna lie, <laughs> this series sounds absolutely fantastic. And <laughs> so these are self-published. I have a feeling a lot of these are, and that's why you don't hear a lot about them on booktube, but but you know, I started saying I think that <laughs> these are books that I can no longer avoid. And he messaged me on Twitter and said, resistance is futile. <laughs> and I have to agree because I bought them. And I'm very excited to get to these. I love urban fantasy. Urban fantasy is my, or was my genre of choice for years. And I don't know why I haven't read these yet. Other than everybody is talking about them and so I'm nervous to read them. But yes i would definitely say that this is a series that twitter loves that big, that booktube has yet to acknowledge the next series that i want to talk about is ash and sand by richard nell first book being kings of paradise and again what 4.25 above a four star on goodreads these are books like i said that have <laughs> been very well loved, just not on booktube. A deformed genius plots vengeance while struggling to survive. A wastrel prince comes of age, finding a power he never imagined. Two worlds are destined to collide. Only one can be king. Ruka, called a demon at birth, is a genius, born malformed and ugly into the snow-covered wasteland of Ascom. He was spared from death by his mother's love. Now he is an outcast, consumed with hate for those who've wronged him. But to take his vengeance, he must first survive across a vast sea in the white sand island paradise of Sri Khan. Kale is fourth and youngest son of the sorcerer king. And at 16, Kale is a disappointment. As the first prince ever forced to serve with low-born marines, Kale must prove himself and become a man or else lose his chance at a worthy future and any hope to win the love of his life. Though they do not know it, both boys are on the cusp of discovery. Their worlds and lives are destined for greatness or ruin. So again, it sounds fantastic and I can't wait to get my hands on this series. I just, these are books that I keep hearing about that, again, booktube just doesn't talk about. Now, this is a name I am going to butcher, and I apologize. But The House of Shattered Wings, Dominion of the Fallen, by Alette de Bedard. Did I get that even partially right? <laughs> this was actually recommended to me by Adrian Tchaikovsky. <laughs> and when he mentioned it it was echoed so i do want to point out that a well-known author was the one who actually recommended this to me not my followers on twitter and i have heard very good things but again it was after that so i just want you guys to be aware of that it is rated a 3.4 on goodreads and i'm not one who trusts goodreads ratings all the time so you guys know by my tbr 10 that that is not something that i am focused on a lot but i know a lot of people do like to look at the ratings on goodreads to see if they want to 
read a novel. A superb murder mystery on an epic scale set against the fallout, literally, of a war in heaven. Paris has survived the Great House's war, just. Its streets lined with haunted ruins, Notre Dame is a burnt out shell, and the Seine ruin and the Seine runs black with ashes and rubble. Yet life continues among the wreckage. The citizens continue to live, love, fight, and survive in their war-torn city. And the great houses still vie for dominion over the once grand capital. And it goes on to explain what the houses are in the synopsis. But it sounds like it could be really good. Now, I do know that Goodreads does not like books with religious themes <laughs> and so it does not surprise me that this does not have a good rating on goodreads but this is kind of urban fantasy steampunk mixed together and it sounds like a book that i will thoroughly enjoy and adrian tchaikovsky let's just be real doesn't always have the greatest ratings on goodreads either but i do think that i'm gonna like his books too so <laughs> like <laughs> urban fantasy does not get a good rap on goodreads just period so i wouldn't take that rating to heart <laughs> especially if you like urban fantasy master of sorrows by justin call this book is again one that has been recommended to me so many times and i see all over twitter <laughs> and Another that sounds great, 3.9 rating on Goodreads. You have heard the story before of a young boy orphaned through tragic circumstances raised by a wise old man who comes to a fuller knowledge of his magic and uses it to fight the great evil that threatens his world. But what if the boy hero and the malevolent threatening taint were one and the same? <laughs> What if the boy slowly came to realize he was the reincarnation of an evil god? Would he save the world or destroy it? <laughs> evil Harry Potter! <laughs> That's where my brain goes. Sorry for that, but definitely, definitely where my brain goes. And um, I, yeah, I'm into it. I'm into it. I think that this will be really, really, really good. And, you know, even if it doesn't read like an evil Harry Potter, this is a trope that we all know and love that has been twisted and turned on its head. And if done well, could be absolutely brilliant. And I have heard it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so there's that. The Legacy of the Mercenary Kings by Nick Martell. Kingdom of Liars is the first book in this series, and it is also a debut. In this brilliant debut fantasy, a story of secrets, rebellion, and murder are shattering the hollows where magic costs memory to use, and the only son of the kingdom, the spy's traitor, holds the truth. Michael is branded a traitor as a child because of the murder of the king's nine-year-old son by his father, David Kingman. Ten years later on, Michael lives a hard scrabble life with his sister, Gwen, performing crimes with his friends against minor royals in a weak attempt at striking back at the world that rejects him and his family. In a world where memory is coin that pays for magic, Michael knows something is there in the hot white emptiness of his mind. So when the opportunity arrives to get folded back into court via the most politically dangerous member of the kingdom's royal council, Michael takes it. Desperate to find a way back to his past, he discovers a royal family that is spiraling into a self-serving dictatorship as gun-wielding rebels clash against magically trained militia. Yeah, that sounds great. <laughs> it sounds like one that I'm really gonna like. <laughs> I love political fantasy. That's probably my favorite subgenre, even though I like to say it's grimdark. Political fantasy, like, political fantasy and grimdark kind of run neck and neck. And this video has gone on for 
30 minutes on my end. So I'm going to cut it off here, but I do have quite a bit more. If you guys would like to see a part two, let me know. Because again, I hear about books all the time on Twitter that are not mentioned on BookTube. And I just want to get more recognition for them. And I just want to make sure that you guys are aware that these books exist. Like, subscribe, do all the fun things. I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.